Oh. Week three! Oh, it's week three of the project and yeah. we are still working on the van. <laughs> this week is gonna be a bit boring. Mm. No, it won't. It will be super interesting and exciting to follow our installation of our uh, electrical system and the diesel heater. So, actually not much is going to actually seem to happen in this episode. I might paint something, hmm. just to make it pretty. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you love painting. Yeah, because I love painting, because I'm a girl. Uh, no, diesel heater, I think. Yeah. Because we're going to build everything around that. It's pretty big so it's about that size we picked a spot did a hole there it is hole number one there it yeah. is oh, we got the holes so good <laughs> and now we're installing it what is that? So this shiny uh, piece of fabric is a heat barrier. I'm not sure if you actually need one of these, but since we do have insulation and wood here in the hole, better be safe than sorry, right? Because we are dealing with combustion engines and uh, hot temperatures. Even though this base plate for the heater isn't supposed to get that hot, um, just this doesn't cost that much and might as well use some. So now I'm just gonna cut out a hole here. This is gonna sit at the very bottom and then we're gonna put the plate on top of that with the heater and the uh, air intake and exhaust pipe coming out of the bottom. Yeah, and also I'm not sure how much we're gonna show from installing this. There's like a million videos on YouTube on how to install a Chinese diesel heater. Yeah, we're not making another uh, tutorial on this. No. Because you can just Google that and you'll find out. There's plenty of info out there. Um, but uh, yeah, should be fun. Check back soon. Soon, soon. Okay, so we just put the heater in place right there. And the heat barrier is around it to protect uh, from excessive heat. And pulled all the tubes and pipes through the floor. Now, we got the car mechanic over here. Uh -huh. Let's see what we got going here. Is it a comf comfortable working position? It's okay. <laughs> I do yoga. <laughs> so what do we have here? We, that black tube is the air intake. Air intake, exhaust, exhaust. and fuel line. Right. What are we going to do with the fuel line? Well, we need fuel. Right. And the fuel is in the fuel tank. In this. And we already have a the bus stove, like a motor heater. Is yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah. We already have one for the for the motor. So instead of putting a new pickup line in the diesel tank, we're just gonna put a T split. Yeah. We're gonna split the existing fuel line. Yeah. And, and attach the the new fuel line to that. And that should work according to Facebook, so we're gonna do that. <laughs> Facebook knows everything. Mm. Good morning. Good morning. Day two, week three. Day two, week three, and we're finally getting our diesel warmer uh, equipped. Today, I am going to connect the fuel line for that heater to the existing fuel line for our old one. And to do that, we bought a, a T connection. It's just a little plastic T that I've mounted these rubber uh, fuel hose onto. And now, and I just cut, the, cut off the diesel line in there, so it's dripping, so I'm gonna get in there and get this uh, in place. And then hopefully the system is tight and works and we can get some fuel pumping. We don't have access to a lift for this car, so it's a good thing I'm not that um, big. <laughs> Just enough room to get in here. And if I could, I would bring the camera in here and show you what I'm doing, but that's not gonna really work today. How was that? Uh, that's disgusting. I got a lot of diesel all over me. Because uh, I had to, you know, snip the, the old fuel line. And then had a very limited amount of time to 
get all the connections in place. But I think it's about tight. I just went in and had a quick shower and changed the shirt. And uh, I'm going to go back in there and tighten everything up so there's definitely no leaks. And then we'll fire it up and see if we get heat. Beautiful summer day. Nice and warm. Do you know where it's even warmer? Here! Look what's working! <laughs> no more uh, cold mornings for oh, you. It's gonna be so nice skiing. I'm used to like negative 10 <laughs> coming up back from the mountain and now it's gonna be like plus 20. What? It's uh, light time. Finally light time. So we're gonna put up six LED spotlights. I scrolled the internet a really long time before I found dimmable 12 volt spotlights. And it turns out the Matic had these and they're pretty neat, beautiful. And you can also adjust the beam angle so we can like pick where we want the most light. So today we're putting these up and hopefully we don't crack the ceiling. I would have preferred to do it the other way around, like mount them before we put the planks up. But we didn't have them, but now we do. So right. fingers crossed. So we drilled some test holes over here. Yep. To see if they if they see fit. fit. That's so perfect. So perfect. All right. Happy about that. <laughs> Let's go drill some holes in our fresh ceiling. And so as you saw in the last episode, we did put the holes in. First, uh, just little screw holes, um, or just little drill holes just to pull the cables through. We didn't know the exact dimensions of the spotlights, which complicates things a bit because now I have to drill these holes without damaging the cable. So what I've done is I push the cable back up into the hole and now I'm just going to carefully drill most of it and then I'm going to take the center drill off and then carefully do the last part and hopefully we don't cut the, cut the cable. <laughs> like that and then we'll take the center drill bit off. Mr. Handy! <laughs> and we'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah, I think that's it. We can just pry that piece off. And now we'll see what happens to the cables. The cables are fine. <laughs> Great success! <laughs> Okay. Ooh, final one. I think we did it. I think uh, all of the cables are intact. And uh, yeah, we're gonna check the current once again before we install the spotlights. I can hold. No, uh, it's okay. So, just putting in the final lamp here. The LED dimmable spots. I gotta get the, the heat gun. Here we go. Just using some of this shrink tube. Shrink tubing. Nice. Plus, Whee! it works. Nice. Okay. Do that Super Mario thing all the time now. Okay. okay. Here, Here we go. go. <laughs> Here we go. Last and final spot. It sneaks in like that. And click. It's done. We got spotlights. Da -da -da -da. Da -da. All right. I hope you're ready for a very intense episode about the electrical system in this van. So I'm sitting here next to the heart of our electric system, our battery bank. So this is where all our energy will be stored, uh, no matter if it comes from the shore power, from the uh, solar, or from the generator. Um, and for this project we have the absolute luxury of working with Dometic that has supplied us with two 
the Dometic eStore 100 amp hour batteries. The, the, the major sales pitch here is that they're lithium. Historically, we've been using lead acid batteries, and that's also still the most popular battery because it's cheap. These come with a lot of heftier pr price tag, but over uh, the years, it pays back big time because um, of several reasons. Um, one is that you can actually charge uh, these up way quicker, and you can also um, completely discharge them, basically. You can go not to 0%, but 90, 95%, um, as opposed to lead-acid batteries, where you have to um, cut off power when you're at 50% to save the lifetime of the battery. Um, and then when you come to the lifetime, this has a lot more life cycles, uh, five to ten times the actual life cycles you get from a lead-acid battery. So that's why they pay back over time. Weight is a big issue for us. Um, when you get 200 amps like this, you get double capacity with lithium and you get half the weight. So that adds up to a lot over time. We're super stoked about these. And uh, we, I think we have a placement for them in the back of the van here. We're obviously going to secure these to the floor and build them into um, a box. One of the downsides with lithium is that you can't charge them if the outside temperature or if the temperature of the battery is below zero Celsius, which means we're going to have to insulate these uh, into a box. You probably use uh, some more of the Armaflex that we use for insulation. Um, and I think we're going to keep them in the back here um, so we can get easy access to them from the back door. And then uh, we built the board with all the uh, appliances or the devices for the electricity here. Um, so today we're going to start drawing some cable and figuring out the placement of all this. What's the plan, Stan? <laughs> Um, so we're starting to plan out the electrics um, for the van. We're gonna put all of our electrical devices here. We got a lot of them. So we measured out a spot in the back of the van where we're gonna put up a huge board like this one and then mount everything to that board and keep all the wiring behind it. Um, it's a very neat way of arranging everything. Um, so that's today's plan. And I don't have like a big enough board for it. So I'm constructing one from from the scraps from our uh, divi cab divider project. So that's the first thing, and then we'll get to the actual arrange arrangement. Is it a perfect fit? We'll see, but at least we're uh, we're making do with what we got. Yes. And we're not throwing away any any uh, wood. No. Okay. Let's check it. So all these cables here are obviously gonna be fitted through some holes and into the devices. But yeah, something like that. It's pretty perfect. I think so. Yay! Boom bam! You're so handy. Um, Mr. Handsome Handy. I have to say that your eye for detail is quite impressive because this entire board is gonna be placed under our bed. So no one's ever gonna see it. Well, maybe. We're gonna see it. Like You're just like painting. This guy. <laughs> so busted. <laughs> No, but we're gonna see it. It's gonna be like the fuses are gonna be down there and the main switch that we're gonna use like once every six months. It's gonna be there. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes. It's fair enough. And the, I mean this board. Come on. You don't like OSB? It's shit. No, it's not shit. It's just not my style. She's done. Yeah. It's a bit better. It's a uh, white this. It's actually grey, but who cares? Um, so, okay. 
Uh, for planning your electrics, um, I would wholly recommend to start doing it in the computer and build up a diagram. Uh, Sophia drew up a diagram of all of our electrics several months ago, so we have kind of started the process in our minds already for, of what we need, uh, what will our use be, just to make sure you dimension everything correctly. There's a lot to think about cable uh, dimensions, cable length, uh, size of fuses, placements of the uh, actual things so you can get to them in an easy manner. Um, so yeah, start that early on and then try to transfer that to real life by making a somewhat organized electrics board. So this is our electrics board. Um, you saw that a little bit earlier, but we actually cut it down a little bit to fit um, the area in the back better. And it's gonna come out a little bit from the, from the wall so we have more uh, room in the back for cables. So um, hopefully most of the cables will go behind this and it's just gonna look neat and tidy with little holes with cables coming out. And yeah, we'll see when it's finished, but I, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty excited. Looks good so far. Right, so we talked about uh, the several ways of charging our batteries um, already. Um, shore power, solar, and uh, battery to battery. Um, so when we are parked up uh, at shore power, we need a charger, um, the mains charger basically. And that is the MCA charger, uh, the Dometic MCA 1250. It's a 50 watt charger. In short, it just takes the 230 volt power from the shore power and it converts that into clean 12 volt energy for our batteries. It's a smart charger. I'll talk later about how it communicates with the control system that we can keep track on battery health, battery balance, um, different temperatures. Um, yeah, we'll go through that later. Also, of course, uh, like I should have mentioned in the beginning of this episode, we're absolutely no experts. So don't take this in an educational way. Look at it as we're trying to inspire you to do this and uh, definitely consult with a professional like we have when we're dealing with the actual um, AC current because that stuff will kill you. Um, in short, it goes through a, a residual current device or an RCD um, and uh, that all has to be installed properly by, uh, by a professional. So we're not gonna show you how we do that. We're just gonna show you the end result. Um, and over here in the front, uh, we got the uh, DC-DC converter. Um, we already mentioned that in the last episode, so check that out here if you haven't. Uh, but anyways, you know what it does. It takes the current from our car's generator and it cleans that up and helps charging the uh, power bank when we're driving, um, which is great to have. Third and final way of powering up our battery bank is the solar power. Um, we talked briefly about that in the first episode, check that out here. But this is our regulator, or the MPPT, that takes the solar power from our great sun and it converts that into 12 volts to charge our battery back here. That's a 20 amp uh, solar charge controller um, and it takes 270 watts from our roof. We're using what's called monocrystalline um, solar cells. Um, they're, they differ from the polycrystalline ones that are way cheaper, um, but it's worth it because it handles a different angle from the sun. It works even when it's partly covered. Um, it has a bunch of perks. So make sure you get the monocrystalline and not the polycrystalline, even though the price tag will be tempting. So that's almost everything except uh, the uh, electric components that you do need. We're gonna talk about that as well, bus bars, uh, fuses, switches, um, fuse boxes, all that, but we'll leave that for later. We also have a Dometic DSP612 sine wave com um, inverter. Um, that is a fancy way of saying we are able to charge our 230 devices like uh, computers, um, camera batteries, uh, coffee maker um, on the road with 230 volt um, converted from the 12 volts for our electric appliances. Um, not much to say about that. It's a 600 watt one, so it's not the biggest one. You can get these in huge dimensions for, say, if you want to watch TV or video games or, or hook up a, a microwave or anything, but we don't really do that stuff. We need to charge cameras and we need to work on our laptops. So that's what we're going to use for that. All right. What did we do this morning? We put everything up on the board pretty much. We're missing a few things, but 
I think it's looking pretty decent. It's tidy. All the cables are gonna be in the back here. So it's gonna look something like this. It's looking a little more professional than our last them. Yeah, we're, s we're stepping up our game for sure. Uh, we're gonna add some fuses, we're gonna add the uh, jordfällsbrytare, the, the circuit breakers, what else? Some add the 230 walls, obviously getting help with that. Um, yeah, that's it. Nice. Nice. Hope we did everything right. We'll find out soon enough. I know we did. I'm an engineer. Oh, hot. Uh, it is the hottest day so far working on the van. It's like absolutely, my, I'm so sweaty you don't even want to know. What are you doing? What is this? Well, right now we are uh, basically installing all the wiring that we can at the moment. So before this goes up on the wall and all of the cables that goes to all our loads actually get plugged in, then there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen first. Um, like switches need to be connected to devices and fuses need to be put in place to protect cables. Um, there's a lot of that stuff going on. Um, a lot of cables need to be connected to these bus bars that basically act as um, meeting points for the cables to get one nice big wire all the way to the battery so you don't have wires all over the place. Um, yeah, so that's what we're doing. And this is how it's gonna be underneath. This is just one wire, there's gonna be so many. Here are all of our 12 volt loads, like lights, USB sockets, fridge, um, stuff like that. And then we have the heavy guns here that Jakob talked about before. And what's this little art project? This it's gonna be like the divider wall between the bed and the garage, sort of. So it's gonna, like it's gonna be super visible from inside the van. And the last car we had, we just painted one of these plywoods white. It's okay, but I think you can do it better. So I'm trying out to do a, a fishbone. <laughs> Is it fishbone? Yeah fishbone um, pattern using these wood sticks they are like if you're Swedish or Finnish or they're from Bultema super cheap I think you get like 400 for nine euros or something it's eucalyptus and acacia wood so I'm just gonna lay them out so I'm gonna glue them to the bo board then I'm gonna take some sawdust and mix that with more glue and like fill, it, fill in all these gaps here. Then I'm gonna sand it down and stain it. Nice. Yes. Can't wait to see what this is. I think it's gonna be pretty nice. All right. It's a good side project when Jakob is doing stuff when you only can be one person at a time, which is a lot of stuff in the van right now. Yeah. Hello. 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 Look at this little project, it's turning out pretty beautiful. It will, maybe. So what's the plan sure. at this moment? The plan what have you uh, What have you done since we last filmed you? I have glued five, 400 sticks, maybe 500 because these are split, to this board in a fishbone pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I have glued sticks to this board since the last time and um, I cut the edges off. I need to do it a bit more here and there. And now, I don't, I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna sand it down a bit and then I'm gonna use, this is my test bit. I'm gonna use wood, um, wood plaster to fill in the gaps like this. Okay. Okay. What's up? <laughs> well, turning out 
Turns out there's a lot of cables in this car. Um, so I've made a couple earth points. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to educate my viewers on how electricity works, but uh, I should go without saying that everything that carries an electrical current needs some earth points. And in a car, the closest you get to earth is the chassis. Um, so I put some bolts in um, to where I pull all the negative wires from all the devices. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm doing. Turns out there's a lot of them. I think I'm pretty, pretty much done with that. So now, after that, I'm gonna prepare all the positive wires um, with the little cable lugs like this one. Um, and prepare those to get plugged into the big motherboard. And after that, I think we're pretty much ready to mount it up and uh, finally start um, putting in some uh, panel in the car. Yes, I think we have like the spotlights, they have two dimmers yeah. and then we have a bed lamp, we have three USB sockets, Yes. fridge, pump yeah. gas, water pump, diesel pump for the heater and then the charger, the DC-DC charger, the pure sign inverter, uh, and the solar solar panel regulator. Yeah, and then we put in three LED lids, LED strips. LED strips. Just to, like, when you clean the van, it's nice to have extra light. And then there's all of the cables for the controllers, like we have a control panel for the battery yeah. batteries. We have a controller. For the yeah, couple couple remote, remote controls and battery monitors. And all of that needs to go behind the panel. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of pre-work that you don't get to see, but it just takes time. And you're doing it. You're so good. <laughs> the electricity man. Oh. Yeah. Looking nice. Same old story, but yeah, things are happening, and uh, I would say we're pretty much we're actually done with that. In this um, the right side of the entire board. Uh, it's got all the fuses, all the cables in place, um, and the only thing left are these really super thick cables and connections for the inverter and for the actual hookup to the to the battery bank. Uh, it's not. We're not going to be uh, done with that for this episode, but you'll see in the next one. So we have uh, a bus bar. All the devices are connected to the bus bar, and then we only have one cable from the bus bar to the main switch over there, and from the main switch, obviously, to the battery bank. And we got some fuses and some switches. Like if we want to turn off the. MPPT for the solar and stuff like that. Yeah, that's it. So this is the tool I've been using to uh, crimp the big cable lugs. This is a 16 millimeter one and uh, yeah, you can't really use a normal set of uh, pliers. Hello? It's okay. that and then some shrink tube on top of that and this little guy is going to the earth for the inverter. Week three. Week three has come to an end yes. and uh, yeah we've got a lot of stuff done even though you can't really tell. This took forever, a lot of uh, cables, a lot of uh, connections, mm -hmm. fuses and most of all a lot of thinking. Yeah. And, and redoing and uh, googling and asking Electric experts yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think we got everything in order and this is ready to get on the wall that you will see in the next episode when we're starting to put the paneling in um, and, and things are gonna start looking like a home finally finally yeah hope uh, you enjoyed this episode and uh, do let us know if you see something that is totally weird and that we have to uh, redo because we're not entirely sure hit the subscribe button and uh, yeah, see you next week. Woo!